Hello everyone, my name is Tiffany, I'm the Tipsy Artist. Today we are painting this very beautiful, loving peacock. Um, we've just had a lot of requests for it recently. It's actually an old painting that I did a long time ago, um, but it has uh, gained some new attention, I guess, because it has a lot of hearts on it. And so I think people are doing it for Valentine's Day. So I thought, well, this would be a fun one to do uh, for our online classes. So this is an example of what it looks like. And I'll have this nearby. We're going to switch camera views here in just a second so that you can have a nice up close view while I paint. So I'm gonna go ahead and place this off to the side. We're going to talk about the traceable. So we sell these on our website. Um, and we also we have two different, we have the digital traceable and then we also have the painting kit. So if you have all the supplies and just want the traceable, then uh, you can find that on our website. And if you have a hard time finding it, just email us and we'll get you the link. And then of course we have the painting kit that has all the supplies with it. So you just have to open up the box, get some water and then you're good to go. All right, so this is the traceable and um, we have it set up with our painting kit supplies. So we have the traceable, the transfer paper, and then the nine by 12 canvas panels. So um, basically what I do is I like to make sure that I do the transfer paper first. I only tape up at the top and then I center the uh, traceable here. And with this particular design, since it's not actually in the center of the page, it it actually has an ending point at the end, then I try to go ahead and line that up with the bottom of the canvas uh, so that it has a nice ending point there for you. And then I always leave my sides free and clear so that while I'm doing the tracing, I can lift up and check my work. Now, today I have gone ahead and worked ahead a little bit um, so that you can see what this is what it looks like after we do all the tracing with the pencil. And then we also have a permanent marker that comes with our kit. And then I go ahead and do a hard line inking over that. And that just really helps make the painting process easier for beginners. That way you don't lose all your hard work with the trace. So and it provides some nice shadows and it just keeps everything really tight and in place. It's really nice. All right. So without further ado, let's go ahead and switch camera views here. So we're going to get up close and personal. And so let me, this may take me a couple of seconds here to get into the right position. Okay. All righty. So I'm going to switch my little pedal here. I'm going to switch it over. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and talk about our next steps here. So I've got all my supplies out and we'll start to go over those step by step, but I have my uh, paintbrushes, my pencil, my permanent marker, napkins, water, and I have, when you get the painting kit with this, it's got your little cute bag of supplies here and then your paint. I have two different types of paint that I use. Sometimes I use um, oil and light nickel, and then sometimes I use artifact. Depends on the colors. So today, with this kind of warm um, mustard gold and some of those warm colors, I prefer using this one. So this is what comes with the kit here. All right, so let's talk about this trace, first of all. So you've got a pencil that comes with your kit. We've got all of our uh, traceable lined up properly, and again, nice and free so you can lift up, check your work. All you're going to do, and this is gonna take a little bit of time, so if you just need to put me on pause for a little bit you know, to get caught up and then continue on, that is um, highly advisable, but you basically just act like you're drawing and over every line, you're just going to basically just hard line draw over the top and it will transfer that to your canvas. Again, there's a lot of detail here, so you're gonna be doing this for a while. So it's real easy to push pause and then you're all good to go. So when you initially get this done, it's going to look just like pencil on your canvas. It's going to be pretty light. I'm trying to get, I don't know if you can see that, but there's a little bit of like pencil showing through there and here. Like that's how light it would theoretically be to begin with. So once you're done with the pencil, then we come back in with a permanent marker and I go ahead and do that hard line over the top. Now, when you're done, you absolutely know you have all those beautiful details in place. 
then you can go and lift this off, but do not do that until you are absolutely sure, sure that you are done. That is so crucial because it is just impossible to line this back up to where you were. So really check, be very precise, no, check, you know, back and forth, make sure, okay, I got everything. And then if you're just, if it makes you nervous, you could also just, you know, kind of keep it still in place and fold it back here for a while. Um, I know I'm good. I'm going to go ahead and just take mine off. And then when you're done with this, you can just throw it in the trash. I'm good with that. All right. Okay. So I've got my little visual here nearby and paint's all ready to go. And again, with the painting kit, you have everything you need. Water will be the only thing that you additionally need to make sure that you have nearby. So let's go ahead and talk about our brushes. We have our mama brush, and then we have our little buddy brush, and then we have our little pit brush, okay? All right, so that's going to be our fun little tools here to help us paint. And then, you know what? I'm talking about getting all ready. I forgot to get my paint lights out. <laughs> okay, I've got it nearby, I promise. Um, Boom. I was like, where did I put that? All right. It's off to the side. Okay, so I've got my little paint plates nearby. I've got a little bit of paint already loaded up, ready to go. So I'm going to go ahead and use my mama brush to start with. And sometimes the brushes are, you know, it. If they're brand new, they're, they can be a little bit stiff. So I always recommend placing them into the water a little bit here. And then let's go ahead and just dry off a little bit. That way you have a nice moist brush and you're all ready to go. All right, so the beginning color that I'm going to use here uh, will be some titanium white. And you do wanna have a nice little um, dollop of this out to start with, and of course, by the way, your paint will be brand new. All right, it'll look like this. My paint is not brand new because I'm trying to use up what I already have open. And so the good news for you is that you'll get a lot of uses out of our painting kit. They're very long lasting. I definitely can get a lot more than just one paint. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and I've got my titanium white. Then I also want to do a little bit of this ultramarine blue. Get some of that. And we'll do a little dollop of that over here. Now I'm going to do that little corner of ultramarine blue. We're going to push that into my white, my titanium white. So we're making kind of a nice light blue. Now, if you want to have a little hint of some like turquoise in there, then you can grab a little bit of this lemon yellow. Kind of work that in a little bit. And then I'm also going to add just a tiny little touch of some beryllium. So that's a beautiful way to also get to that. And a little touch of that. Look very bright and vibrant. I have a lot of ultramarine blue. And I came in one here. All right. Make sure I also have some more of that just pure white out. And then a little bit more of a dollop of that ultramarine blue. Go back and forth between those two. Let's grab some water. That's really going to help extend our paint into that surface area. I'm going to go ahead and do a little. It's going to feel like a cross stroke back and forth. 
We'll draw a little bit of white as we go. Just crisscross back and forth. And I've got a lot loaded up of that turquoise. I'm going to go ahead and rinse out here. Dry off a little bit more of our pure titanium white. Nice big dollop of that. And I'm going to start to push this down here on the side. I want it to lighten up quite a bit over here. So crisscross strokes back and forth. Feels like you make the letter X over and over and over again. And more of that pure titanium white. And you could do little touches of that lemon yellow as you go to and kind of sprinkle that through the background. And let's grab some more water. I'm going to make sure that our paint is kind of translucent now. See that permanent marker will bleed right through there, but you do want to make sure you've got enough water into that white where it is translucent because you definitely want to be able to see your work just bleed through. So keep adding enough water to it so you get that nice translucent quality so that it allows you to be just kind of free and loose and make that background color come near that work without having to do all of that tedious cutting work around the edges there. That is just a crazy amount of cutting work. And it's so much easier just to do a nice light wash of translucent, ethereal, blue sky here into the background. Just cross it back and forth. And holding that brush a little bit more over to the side, parallel to the canvas, and again, doing that cross stroke back and forth. That's gonna really help here with this background. Nice, light, translucent wash of this blue. I'm gonna have enough water to wear. I'm definitely see. So feather out that brush stroke by holding that brush more over to the side. This cross back and forth. I'm going to come in enough to where I don't want any of the sky to be untouched and vacant behind those feathers. So I'm definitely coming in enough with that wash to where I know I've got good coverage behind here. Let the sleeves a little bit here. A little bit chilly in the sun room today. Okay. Let's go back to more of that water. Do little touches of that turquoise. Is that light blue? And again, just a nice light wash of that. So it's coming into the background. And you can do little touches of just pure ultimately blue too. A little bit more dramatic. Got a lot of water with it because you don't want to cover up any of that design. So we keep our inking it's just bleeding through here. Nice, light, gentle hands. Holding that brush more over to the side. And 
like wash it down. And then on this side, it's quite a bit lighter. So I'm going to be picking up more of that bright titanium white. And being a little bit more occasional as I start to push in some of that blue. Push that back and forth, and every now and again, think about that sweet lemon yellow, like that sunshine coming through here. And a bit of that old chameleon blue, push that back and forth. Right. All right, so that is a beautiful sky here. And if you want, it's optional that you can kind of build up more of you like dusty strokes of back and forth white here, but that was like more cloud cover happening in your sky. It takes a lot of repetition, but more of a firm hand pushing that back and forth. Okay, very subtle change there. All right, let's go ahead and rinse out. Let's just go ahead and fry it. Okay, um, now we're going to go ahead and we've got our turquoise mixed up. So I'm going to go ahead and do a little bit of that work. Let's use our little bit brush. And we had our turquoise. Let's do a recap on that summary here, Viridian. And that makes a very beautiful color as it is. But you can add a little bit of that ultramarine blue if you would like to it and the white. And we're going to do a little twirl into that color. That'll give us a nice fine point. And then we're going to be a little bit more tidy and careful with this color. So we're going to have this come around that little shape in there. I'm going to add some water to it so that it becomes a lot more fluid and easier to use. Really flow into the pores of the canvas quite a bit more. And do a little twirl to give you that nice fine point. So it comes up to a nice little point right there. Make this like a teardrop shape. So we're going to be filling in those little teardrop shapes with all this beautiful kind of turquoise color with the pin to the Floridian, a little bit of ultramarine blue. A nice soft curve around. Bring a little twirl back into that color. And I'm going to leave the what appears to be like a little triangle and a little circle shape. We're going to leave those blank. Let's have some different colors that will work into the shape later. Teardrop. Pour into that paint. There's a lot of these. 
have to be patient with the process. In terms of holding the brush, just think about holding it like you would hold a pencil, very similar to that. I'll give you more control. Also keep monitoring your water into the mix. You wanna make sure that paint's easy to move around, very fluid. It almost has like a really high grade quality watercolor feel to it. You've never experienced expensive watercolors. To me, they are so similar to water down acrylic. That's very much what they're like in my opinion. Color in here. Here, turn up a little triangle shape, not circle. Getting closer, it's done. With this, <laughs> with this step, yeah. Very relaxing, just think moments. Peaceful thoughts. Let's softly place that color into those shapes. Take that water, it's your friend. Let's move that paint around. Point soft, curve around. That circle around the other triangle. Okay, I think I got them all. All right, rinse out, dry off. Let's go ahead and do. Oh, let's see, let's see, let's see some of that really pretty light green now. Um, let's do some of this hooker swing. Draw off of that. Very dark to begin with. And then we're going to do some more of this titanium white. I'm going to mix that together. Let's get some water. So that's really pretty. And you can warm this up a little bit. I'm going to add more white to it, lighten it up. So I'm going to let you make the choice on this. This is very pretty as it is. It's a bit more minty. If you want it to have a bit more of a sage quality, then you can add some yellow ochre to this. And that's going to pull it to a warmer. Sage. 
And there it is. There's our beautiful sage color. Okay. And you can lighten that up more too. Okay. Let's add some water to it. Kind of soupy. We got a little twirl into the paint. And then let's go ahead and start to fill this in. We have, we're going to avoid our hearts and a little bit more water with that light wash of this around our hearts and in the center. But I don't want it to be so opaque that I lose those black lines with the trace. See how they're bleeding through? So make sure you add enough water to give you that nice light wash of that color in there. Yeah, it a little bit. So we're going to come back in and do those lines. And here's what's great. You can do it with paint, or if your hand is not very steady, then you can also come back in and just do it with your permanent marker. So it's a really nice cheat. Beautiful thing. Gives you a nice precise line. We're working this into the center area. We come up through some of these long sections in here too. I covered my heart just a little bit. A little heart in here, so we'll leave that exposed. I'm going to take this green basically around. It's not teardrops. It's going to be a nice layer of color. When we get out to the little points, we're just going to do a nice little lift off with a light hand. I want to do this, do a little twirl. Kind of look like a lot of green at first because at the end we do follow up with a taper of the dark charcoal and the black to line out all the little feathers. So some of that green will start to become obscured with that when we come in with that secondary step. But for right now, this is going to provide a nice little undercoat underneath all of that.
following it around all those teardrops. And then lifting off with a light hand when we get to the end of that feather. Water, keep it nice and fluid. Oh, you're doing great. Just keep going. Okay, let that water, make that paint move. And that little teardrop shade. Light little tapers. Well, Get this little gun here. All right, good idea. Look at here again. Right. A little bit. Ta -da. Good job. Okay, so now we're going to run and plot here. And then let's go ahead and Little buddy, a little time in the sun here. So let's go ahead and use our ultramarine blues. Good. Use that in the first day. Okay, white to it. Okay. Let's keep it mostly pure. So one. I'm going to go ahead and work this into this shape here. So I'm going to use the edge side of the brush. 
see that firm line. A little water helps make that paint really flow into the pores of the canvas so you don't get that little peekaboo with the white. So I'm going to go ahead and get this larger section done with our little buddy brush. I'm going to turn that handle more over to the side to get a more opaque finish here over the top. Use your light, gentle hands. And don't forget a little bit of add a little bit of water there to help that work its way into the pores of the canvas. You can hold it more like a pencil to get around that edge there. I'm going to go ahead and let little Betty rest in the water. I'm going to go back with a little bit, do that little twirl into our paint, and grab a little bit of water, a little twirl. And start to do this tiny cutting work around the velvet part of the head. Right up to here, right up to the eye in this little section. It definitely requires this little screen brush to get into that space. Oh, that would look really amazing. Okay, so got more blue I need to work in. Go ahead and do another little dollop here of that. Our ultramarine blue. Work into that. And then we've got our little circles here. So we just kind of kind of push them over to the spin with the brush. Dip into that blue, that brush, and barely kind of twirl with some firm pressure. I do want a nice circular rotation. So little circles. And then this little circle will also always be, this is going to be that ultramarine blue. So a little circle in here. 
start to fill that in. Now, a little bit of water if it's kind of being a little bit dry and stubborn. And just a little twirl at the top there of the brush. Again, just a little. And that little uh, white shape you're leaving, that's actually going to be blackened in. So you can either do that with paint with me, or you can let it set up and dry and do it with your permanent marker. You just can't ever use a permanent marker on white paint, or it will just immediately ruin your permanent marker, which is sad. You don't want that to happen. Let you have a nice long life with it. Ultramarine blue. Be careful, I'm going to stick my forearm into the rest of the thing. Let me just be careful of that. Look at hand. We very gently touch things like this. Blue circles. A little bit more water on the coral. Did I get them all? I think so. I missed something. I'll go back and get it. Rinsing out, dry it off. All right, let's go ahead and grab some more of our yellow ochre. A little bit brush again. A little bit of water just in case. Make it easier to move. Coral into the paint, get a nice fine point again after loading that. And then this is where we place in all of our little triangles of yellow. So it's a really pretty little pattern. Delicate little triangle. It's like mustard, mustard gold, but it's yellow. And to keep that really delicate light tan, just act like you're just barely touching your canvas. That keeps your hand light. And just find those, keep it simple in your mind.
been doing this shape ever since you were little. Easy. I think I got them all. Okay. Nice. Okay, let's get a rinse out. Dry off. We're going to mix up some beautiful whiskey. So I've got my crimson red. I don't kind of got so I have some titanium white over here on the back end. I'm gonna grab that, mix that in. Grab some water. And then we're gonna put it on the parts. Maybe a little bit fresh. Some of these are so little, I can just do a little push into that shape and pull down. And if you want yours to be pure red, I mean, you can do just pure crimson too. So that's also a little extra of that over the top. So you can see it's really pretty. Which is pure red in here too. The overlay of that, right over the top of that lighter pink. Oh, I forgot a little triangle right there. It's kind of busy, so your eye can miss some things. So there's that. I'll go back and try that little triangle. Little bit, little ochre, and there's that little bit of that thing. That was driving some people completely mad, I'm sure. They're like, oh, get that little spot. <laughs> okay, um, let's do some gray. All right, so I've got, let's grab some black black. I'm going to be using in a few minutes. So I have a little bit of white here from earlier. So I'm going to grab a little bit of that white. Mix that in with that lamp black. Mix those two together. It's going to give me a nice charcoal and you know, white there, that much lighter gray. Coral into that paint. Right, right there. There we go. Need a much lighter gray right there. Okay, right there. So we got a little twirl in there. So I'm going to go ahead and do this bottom part of the gray. I'm going to go more of that much darker purple top here. Barely touch the canvas like that curve around that little point. It's out. Now I need that very light right there. I'm going to go back and grab my other part of that. A lot more of that titanium white. So I need super, almost just white, but just a teeny amount of the gray in with the white. Keep it very, very light. 
Then we'll go ahead with that too. And we're going to put this into this little section in here. Here. And we have just a little bit of that darker gray. That little area right there. And then we're going to take a little bit and just go into more of that black. We've got a little bit of water in there too to make it nice and fluid. A little twirl in there. And then we're going to go ahead and blacken this in. Maybe softly curve it around all the same lines of that left off with a white can. Again, a little bit of water, a little bit of that black. And then we're going to make a nice echo of the same curve here and follow that around. Just left off with a white can. And we're going to softly kind of follow on this side too, with just a little parenthesis shape of the black. Okay, I think now we're at that place where we just have a lot of blackening to do. So I'm going to show you with the paintbrush. And that is absolutely most essential for the feathering look, but some of it can be you know, a little bit more of your chi with your permanent marker for the two. But we're going to stick with some watery, soupy black here. Add some water to it so it makes it very fluid, easy to move. I'll do my little twirl into that paint. Nice fine point. And then I'm going to be following the line of that feather and lift off with a light hand. Twirl in there, follow that around. We're going to follow that little teardrop, go up, put it off with the right hand. And so we have that nice little shape. This is just our lamp black. Put a water in there to make it nice and fluid. And then here I'm going to just connect that. This is like an elegant little thing. I'm going to make those little black lines. And then those little blue dots and then the top of the head. We're getting rid of that black a lot and that little twirl. With that nice fine point. I'm going to start by just outlining all of our, our little teardrop shapes first. So we don't forget them. And I'm going to that teardrop off with a white hand. And it definitely takes a watery consistency into that black to get that nice fluid curve that goes all the way around. Lot of just black details for a while on this painting. Down. Just down to that last bit. But this is what I was talking about with if this is a little too much for your shaky hand, you can absolutely let all this just set up and dry. Come back to it in a little bit. Use your permanent marker to do a hard line of black 
for all this detail. It looks great. It's a nice sheet. Some people really prefer that. So, do these things. Tiny, tiny little loops, and not loops, but like little teeny tiny hills. Creates that little pattern in there. So they've all bled through really nicely. You can just see these little shapes to outline. Okay, we're going to start to work around. That feathering shape, so you lift off with a light hand around that teardrop shape. Make sure that you lift off with a light hand at the very end of that feathering stroke so that it's the thinnest part of it. Be just nice, light, delicate. You have to keep adding that water into your black to make it very good and it goes on a lot smoother. So we're getting that beautiful feathery look there. It's really taking shape. A lot of that repetition with that black now to reinforce those details.
a little soft curves with this. And just swirling around that shape, soft curve of black. So now you're going to be able to see how that green is just a really nice little undercoat for this black. It just really creates that nice layer. So let's see. I'm just going to a little double check here. I feel like we're really, really thin. Another thing, but sometimes you have to really look at it. I think at this point, I'm going to come back in. Small little details, but I want that little bit hard to pop that over the top there. Oh, okay. yeah. All right. so I almost feel like it's optional. You could do the, the white accent, but I'm going to do the black. A little bit brush, a little bit of black. And we're going to get that little, almost like a little crescent moon. Just right in through there. It's going to feel like you're making a little comma. Okay. And you can always work in mama here a little extra coat of that ultimately blue and then this thick layer of paint right over the top. Some fullness there. That is beautiful. Now I have one other little hint here. Now I worked very carefully. I let my uh, permanent marker work make the eye in here with the paint. But if you accidentally blackened in all of the white of the eye and don't know quite how to fix that and feel a little bit clumsy with creating a dot, I'm going to do another little eye here. So let's just say we had a little eye. Shape. And I'm making it a little bit bigger, but the scale, but there's a little eye shape. You can make that little flash point of light okay, by taking the end of the brush and just going into that white like that. Oops, there you go. Okay, and just with a very delicate hand, just kind of barely touched, and there's that little white flash point of light in the eye. So you can replicate it that way too. That's a 
easier, tidier way to make that little tiny amount of light. All right, so I think we are done other than just signing our masterpiece here, which I recommend doing with your permanent marker. So I wanna make sure I'm, you can do it on this side where you have a little bit more room or here. So you can just take this. Sometimes I sign picking for us, sometimes I sign Oops, here, it just depends kind of mood I'm in. <laughs> all right, so there we go. It's beautiful, all done. A beautiful little loving peacock. So yes, we have all the supplies that you need on our website at tipsyartist.com. Uh, please let me know if you have any questions. We do have the traceable and the whole painting kit, but that's going to wrap us up for today, but you'll have a beautiful rest of the day and we'll see you real soon. Much love to y'all. Peace.